Hi everyone, this is Jerry Dean from Missing Persons of America. I'm gonna be going over the case of Summer Wells that's missing in Tennessee. That is, that is quite a case and a lot of people are really upset about this missing girl. And I'm gonna go over what social media is saying, my thoughts on it, and what the sheriff is saying about this case. That's coming up next. So Summer Wells, she is from Rogersville, Tennessee, and she went missing on Tuesday. That would have been June 14th, 2021. Now the siblings stated that she went out the back door. She's five years old. She went out the back door around 6 p.m. that night, and that was the last time they saw her. The sheriff just said today uh, during a presser that the family reported her missing at 6.30 p.m. So it was only 30 minutes after she went missing. So that was pretty quickly. Now, during this disappearance, there has been a lot of social media talking about this and a lot of questions and a lot of questions from reporters that I understand why they're asking them because this case is going a little different than other cases have gone in the past. As you see, there's pictures of the house where Summer went missing from, and all around is woods. There is not any neighbors. No one would have seen her walking away. I also do believe that if someone took her, it would be kind of odd for them to be there at that exact time that she was out in the backyard and then grab her up and leave. There also has been no report of any but he'd been seen outside the family. There's been no report of any vehicles seen. So that's not come up, which leads me to the Amber Alert. Now, usually the Amber Alert is put out now, uh, when there is a vehicle that's been seen or there is a person been seen around the child and they will put out a Amber Alert and Amber Alert. And what I have noticed on this one is it started out as an endangered child alert, and then it went up to an Amber Alert. Now, there's a lot of uh, questions regarding this from the reporters at the press, so they're asking about it. I'm asking about it, and many of us in social media are asking about it. Why the Amber Alert? This is because there has been families out there before that have asked for Amber Alerts, and they were not given to them because they didn't meet this criteria. And from what I can see, this Summer Wells Amber Alert doesn't meet the criteria either, but they put out the Amber Alert anyway. And also interestingly, the not so much the TBI, but the FBI was brought in. And that usually, they're usually brought in, and this is from my experience from the past, they were always brought in whenever they thought there was foul play and they were looking for a suspect. Now, the sheriff is stating that this is not it, and he explains his reasoning for bringing them in. I'll let you listen to that. And we're talking about the Amber Alert. When they raise that up another level, that helps more people paying more attention. You get more clues, you get more calls, and then everybody can call that 1-800-TBI-FIND, and it all goes into a database, which helps us in an area where we don't have a lot of communication anyway, so TBI helps us with that. And our team made the decision to elevate the alert to an amber. And what, what's the difference? An endangered child alert is a mid-level alert um, where a child could potentially be in danger. An amber alert is, we issue those when we believe a child is in imminent danger of bodily harm or death, and it's the most severe alert. Well, when the Amber Alert was issued, you said there was new information that led you to believe that, that Summer might be in more danger. Can you expand on that a little bit? I can't. That's part of the investigation. And we hope the FBI was called in fairly early. Can you kind of explain why that decision was made? Well, we have, we have an excellent uh, relationship working together. And just like if this case stems outside of Hawkins County, then you have the TBI. 
to help with that. But if it expands on out past the state of Tennessee, then you got the FBI. So we're all on the same page, and we just keep on keep on going. We're just working together as a team. All have the same goal. Let's let's find summer. Also, during the presser that came out today, today's Thursday, they brought up Donnie. That would be Summer's father's criminal record. Now, one of the reporters directly asked the sheriff. He said, yes, the sheriff, if the father's criminal record was irrelevant in this investigation, and the sheriff said no. And I thought that was a very... I was surprised by his answer. So let me let you listen to that part here, too. Now, on social media, many people are talking about the photos of summer that are being put out there. And in the background, you could see the how the family is living. It's very untidy. It almost appears as though there's some mold growing on one of the walls and they're all bringing it up and one person even posted on social media that my daughter's best friend is friends with this family my daughter came to me a couple weeks ago upset she sat down told me that she'd visit the house in beach creek with her best friend and best friend's grandmother she told me they were shooting the dogs with bb guns and smacking the kids around my daughter got the address from me and i called dcs Please delete if this is not allowed. Now, we don't know if this is authentic, if this is true. It's up on social media, so take it with a grain of salt. But it does go back to what everybody has been talking about, is about the environment. It did not look really well for all these children that are living in this house. Now, the PIO officer said today that they have received 50 leads and none of them have panned out. Now the sheriff, he looks very, very determined to locate Summer. Doesn't look like anybody's gonna stop anytime soon. They're gonna continue to search for her. They, right now, they're four miles away from the house and they haven't found anything yet. Now it's possibility that she may be somewhere and they just by, they passed right by her and they didn't see her. But I would think by this time with them calling out her name, she certainly would have come out. I don't believe she would have hidden. I She's she's not autistic. I believe she would have come out if she heard somebody calling her name. I'm sure she's probably had enough of being out there in the woods and if her hurt any people at all, would have gone to them to get help, to get out of those woods. So I'm worried that she's not within that, around that house, that she's farther out or even away from that location entirely. The other thing that's very interesting is although Summer's mom has gone on social media and said a few things here and there, the Summer's father has not been on social media and no one's heard from him at all. I would have thought by now that the family would have come forward and spoken to the media, but they haven't. Doesn't mean they won't do it in the next couple of days, but they haven't come forward. But the, the biggest silence seems to be from the father. Also, the last thing that I want to mention that the TBI and the Sheriff Department and FBI it's have all completely controlling this case very closely. They're not asking for any volunteers to go search the area. They've got it. They're handling it themselves. And I kind of wonder if there might be a reason behind that, because if you have a lot of people looking for someone and it turns out to be a victim of found play, then you've got them trampling all over the crime scene. And if you don't bring these people in, or you only bring the authorities in, then that is not going to happen. Also, what is interesting about this case is that Rosemary Bly, who is Candace Wells' sister, also went missing. Candace Wells is Summer's mother. She went missing back in 2009 from St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin, and she went missing on August 22nd, and her vehicle was found abandoned about four days later, 
and she's never been seen again. Now back to Summers, I watched uh, another presser and I noticed, as I said before, that there was very um, controlled answers to all the questions that were coming in from the reporters. The reporters wanted to know a lot about the background of the family and are asking more questions regarding that more than they are asking about what the police are doing. The sheriff did come out and say that they have brought out everything they can. They brought out helicopters. I didn't hear anything about drones, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're the flare cameras. They brought out uh, planes. They have brought out their searchers, the search and rescue and the police search and rescue. And they have, what else have they done? I've got about everything you could possibly do, they've done. And they've been doing it since she went missing Tuesday evening. So let me give you a description of Summer. She's four foot tall, 40 pounds, blonde, hair and blue eyes, and her hair has been shaved. There's been speculations all over the place of why her hair is shaved, uh, anywhere from um, lice to the summer months to, I could just go on and on, but nobody knows exactly for sure why her hair is super short, but it is. She might've asked for it to be. All her brothers have super short hair. Maybe she decided she wanted it too. Uh, she was last seen wearing a pink shirt and gray shorts. I'm sure she'll still be wearing that. And let me give you the phone number for the Hawkins County Sheriff Department. It is 423-272-7121. All right, let's hope this has a positive ending. All right, thank you everybody for listening. See you soon.